More than three quarters of all corporate change initiatives fail. More than 85% of re-engineering initiatives fail. Over 72% of mergers never hit their financial objectives. And on a personal level, well, by February, New Year's resolutions are ancient history. Personal goal setting has a worse track record, I'd say. How many diets do people go on and how well do they work? The thing is, there is a common cause to all of these failures and it is so easy to get around it if you invest the time to do that. With most change initiatives, whether it's personal or corporate, there's a basic strategy for it. You figure out where you are, you figure out where you want to be, you find a strategy, you build a bridge, and you get over it. And that's exactly why they fail. Where you are, where you start out, is the situation a lot of times. What's your current situation? Where you want to be, that's your goal or your outcome. And so here's the logical plan. Figure out where you are, where you want to be, what's the gap. Find out what the gap is. You build a bridge and you get over it, right? And that's exactly why 75 plus percent of change initiatives fail, personal or corporate, um, or best produce results that are meh. And the reason is whether you're talking about personal change or corporate change, what's behind the change are people. And people are not logical and rational. People make decisions emotionally and then you find the information, the data to rationalize it. And I have seen people over the years fight irrationally to stay in toxic, abusive situations. People talk about the comfort zone. It's not comfortable. It's familiar. It's what you know. And people will fight irrationally to stay with what they know. So what you've got to do is not just look at the system and the situation. That's the wrong word. It's not the situation. This is the symptom. Okay, what's happening right now is the symptom. And if it's uh, not changing, then in some way you are benefiting from staying there. I know that's tough to accept for some people, but there is a benefit. What you have to do is go back and see what are the causes. There's a framework that's great for this. It's called um, the fishbone or the cause effect diagram de developed by uh, a guy by the name of Ishikawa and the fishbone because it sort of looks like a fishbone. And you can brainstorm what could be the causes of that, what are the different factors, different processes, different influences, and then you use data to figure out which ones are there. But here's another piece a lot of people don't do in the fishbone. You've got to dig in to say what are the wins for people to stay where they are. How are they benefiting, including you? How are you winning? Because it is an emotional decision to stay there. It's not logical, it's not rational, it happens at the unconscious level, okay? And so that identifies what's really keeping you where you are. Now, about 25 years ago, I I've, I've was doing this stuff and I realized the fishbones looking at where you are, the current symptoms, and looking back at the past. Well, when you're making change, you are setting a goal into the future. And it suddenly occurred to me, if you can do that going to the past, why not do it into the future? And so I created a diagram that because this is called the fishbone, this is going into the future, I call this the wishbone. Or since this was made up by Ishikawa, you could call this the Wishikawa diagram. And you look, if you get your goal, which is concrete and measurable and all of those things, what will be the effects of that? What will be the impact? What are all the things that you could, that, that will happen? What will be the influence on other people and processes on all these sort of things? But then the next piece is also to look at what are the wins that will keep you there? Because if you don't create wins for people to stay where they are, whether it's yourself or a whole organization, they will try to get back there. And guess what is here? You have now identified a second gap. And this is the gap that most people do not deal with. It's what's the gaps between the what's it for, in it for me, the wins, 
the gap between the what's in it for me to stay where I am, the what's keeping me there and others, and what's keeping me and others in the new state. Once you've got that, you can build a much better plan that bridges the full gap and will give you much better odds of getting across there. So if you're serious about really getting to results that are, oh yeah, instead of just meh results, you need to invest the time to step back, figure out what got you here, what your wins are, figure out what will be your wins to keep you moving ahead. And then with that new gap, then you build a plan and you'll increase your odds of creating those oh yeah results way beyond your wildest dreams.